Finally, we get to fit the drawer. A couple of things first, though. I've got my wedges that are protruding here. I need to cut those off before I break them off. Um, you can do that in one of a couple of ways, but often they'll pair off if you're careful. What I would do is take a chisel, bevel down, come in from the outer edge here first, so that I'm chiseling into the body of wood, and then come from the opposite side, like that, and then pair down with a good sharp chisel. And that's got that part done. Just take it down flush with your plane. An alternative way, I noticed on the other side, this wedge is protruding much more. So I'm gonna lift this up to here and take my coping saw. What I'll do is I'll just rub that coping saw above the surface, well above the surface, like that, and cut it off. So that works fine too. Drop it down. And just pare it down until you're flush. Like that. That's my finished mortise hole with the wedge tenon in place. So that's that. Now this is obviously got to fit into this hole and that's where I'm going next. Little steps on these areas, anything like that will need to come off, but I don't take them off straight away. I want to see how this fits into the opening. It's very, very close. I suspect that this is the height. I feel like it's sticking on this side. I can take it off the bottom or I can take it off the top edge. I'm going to plane that flush anyway. So I may as well get that done first. So how we deal with this is just a fraction of a mill above here. Come in gently. Don't drive at this really hard because it can cause an issue. That's fine. When I'm going through here, I make sure the cutting edge has time to cut. which means I don't hammer at it, I go gently and try and feel for the plane as it's cutting. Well, that's flush. I've got enough on the width and I'm going in. So now I'm gonna focus on the underside here. Take some off here. These are flush here, fairly close anyway. two or three shavings and back and forth, back and forth until we get this going into the recess. Very close now. That was just the rim of the drawer catching on the underside of the bench top. I'm slowing down as I meet that front edge because that means there must be a hump here because my plane is straight. So I've straightened up that whole side of the drawer. Now it's getting tighter and it's tight at this end. But you kind of expect, this is catching here. Can you see, I've got some damage area here. And that's because there's something inside here 
a little bit of glue somewhere on the underside, so I'll have to pare that down. So now I'm down onto the underside here at the front edge that's stopping it from going in. And I just keep taking this down, working with it. Two or three shavings at a time. until it fits smoothly. You may want to take these corners off now, early on here, because sometimes there'll be something glue or something in the corner that is catching on the inside of the runner. I think this should be close now. Very close. So just work it. See, I've got this, it's tight. It's not moving between top and bottom. And one of the things I learned when I was very young was to make sure that I didn't put a draw in tight because often the wood will swell and you can't get the draw out. It's very difficult. And that's basically Fitting the draw to the recess, and I'm fairly confident I'm very close now. I want a, about a 32nd to a 16th of an inch gap to give it a little clearance. Against the grain there. And you see my plane is skipping at this end. That means this is the part that's high. Give it a try and I think I'm there. Could be the width now. I think it could be the width of the draw. But that's near enough for me now to fit the draw bottom which is what I'm going to do next. When it comes to running the grooves and you've got your plow ply and you're running a 3 8 groove and the plywood is slightly under, what I've done with some of my blades is I've actually cut them to the size of a standard sheet of plywood which will be usually in metric. So this fits tightly into the groove and I've got to cut it to width. The length I've already cut so the length is going to be in quarter of an inch back here and I've left it overhanging an inch and a quarter at the back which is plenty you don't need any more than that and you can do it less but on the width you've got to get it right so what I did is I offered it into the groove on this side and took my pencil to this side to get me the exact width that I needed and then you can just take a rule or you can mark it either end and use a straight edge. You just run that ruler along the, oops, along the edge like that. And we're ready to cut this. How you cut yours is up to you. I'm gonna go in the vise, but you can clamp it to the bench top. Use a cross cut panel saw. I kept it close to the vise to reduce the, the amount of vibration I get. cutting dead on the line I'm not leaving a margin for error because I'm going to actually take the plane to it and make it marginally undersized I'm going higher in the vise now because I've got my cut start I put my fingers on the back side here and pull the, pl the plywood towards it To again reduce the amount of vibration I get. My plywood's quite hard, it's made out of beech. 
pretty hard. We're going to just true this up a little bit here. Just keep going until you're down to your line. And there's my continuous shaving. Break the corners. And that's my width cut. But what I want to do is also, I want to make sure that whichever end is going into there, I want to make sure that it's square. Now I checked this end and I worked parallel to it to get my length. So there I am square, or am I? If not, just plain it square. Little bit, just a hair off, so I'm going to take a shaving from zero here just to get it square. So there it is squared up now. And that will make sure that the drawer remains square when I push this all the way to that front edge. It'll keep the drawer square as long as I haven't too much of a tolerance on each side here. Now here it's already tight and I don't want it that tight. I would have to really drive that in. So what I'm going to do on the underside, this is my top side. I'm feathering this outside edge. You can use a smoothing plane or a jack plane, whichever you prefer. What I'm going to do is drop my hand here. And I'm relieving that edge. Same on this side. I've forgotten which was my squared edge. That's great. And then the same on this leading edge where this is going to go into the recess. See how I'm angling my plane 45 degrees this way at a very shallow angle on the underside here. And hopefully that will be enough. Sometimes this, there's a step there where you, oops, wrong way. There, I can feel it. Sometimes this is bellied a little bit. Let's take this off. What I'm gonna do, I doubt whether I would be able to force that in. Let me pull it back, if I can. Check myself, I can see a step there. Right on this inside corner here, which means either I hadn't planed that edge square, or something like that. So I'm gonna take a chisel in here. I'm going to pair along here just like this to give me a leading edge in and I'm going to go across to make sure that that's level on the inside of the groove. Also often right inside there you'll find a little bob of glue that popped up. So here I'm fine on this side, I don't have any issue there. We'll try again. Just 
check inside here to make sure I have a slight gap about a millimeter on this side so I'm fine with that and I've got about half a millimeter down here so I'm happy that this will go with a little persuasion you can check across here too just to make sure this isn't bulbing because sometimes that will give you a telltale sign there we go so I'm looking down here it's gone into the groove to make sure it's gone all the way and that's my draw fitted rattle free in there so I've just got to add a couple of screws now on this underside so I've got to go into the center I'm going to put a screw here screw here screw here so I'm going to measure and I want three eighths on so I'm, I'm going to come an inch and five eighths from there just to get the position to get the middle one just come in here if you have I've got ten and a half so that's five and a quarter so simple this non-metric system I love it I love it don't you and be naughty aren't I okay 3 sixteenths hole here right on that crosshair through the first layer of the plywood what we're going to do first though I want to make sure that it is still square so I'm going to turn it over check it for square before I sink any screws down in here no group glue, you don't need any glue on this because I still have the opportunity to make a micro adjustment by using the plywood bottom if I want to I am so dead square, I should let you see it 21 and 5 eighths corner to corner is what I got yours may be different because you may be using uh, different sizes of screws, uh, I mean different, differently I'm talking, this is because I'm talking instead of thinking, different sized pieces of wood whatever, so drive these now, and that's going to keep your draw nice and square, no matter what, for a lifetime of use. So now that will last a lifetime and the one thing about plywood is it doesn't shrink so it will never shrink like solid wood will now I've got to fit it into the opening but I have to plane up the sides of the dovetails first so I'm going to do that next <laughs> to plane the dovetails is easy enough I prefer it to, I prefer to do it when it does have the draw bottom in because the draw bottom keeps it square so because you do apply quite a bit of pressure on this end grain shallow setting on your plane work across the width a little bit more than that just take them down I'm still feeling for that depth of cut and you may uh, find yourself wanting to plane more off the side if it feels tight when it's going into the recess you may want to plane more off the sides afterwards that let me go 
go ahead and try it. So I'm going to put the, the knob on now because fitting it into the recess, but what I'm going to make sure not to do is I'm not going to uh, glue the knob in. I'm going to make it so I can remove it because there are times when you want to remove the knob during the life of the drawer itself. And also I haven't fitted the front to the apron yet, so I've got to make sure that it's flush all the way around before I do that. So we can measure the center here, or we can go corner to corner, whichever we prefer. There are my crosshairs. So this is, I've turned a knob here and you can learn how to do that. We're going to use a 3 8 bit. And I want to go fairly precisely to depth. I don't really want a gap between the end of this, particularly another quarter of an inch. That leaves me a quarter of an inch of wood as well. That should do it. So twist that in. I'm not going to cinch this in place yet, but all I have to do now is right in there, there's the point of the bit that came through. So I can use that as a center to drill the hole to receive the screw. So there it is right onto the end of the knob. A smaller bit as a pilot hole will help direct the screw and make sure that the knob uh, spindle doesn't split. And all I've got to do is drive a screw into there next, countersink it, drive the screw and that is secure. It's already feeling quite secure. So now I can offer this into the drawer opening and see what more I have to do to make this a fit. A couple of small things when you get to this stage, you're still handling this, got sharp corners on here. I use a bullnose, but you could use a block plane, you can use your Stanley smoothing plane. I just take this along the corner like this, inside corner, like that. And this makes it easier on your hands for the lifetime of the drawer as you move this in and out. So little things like this make a huge difference. And um, now I'm ready to try this in the actual opening. I think it's very close because we saw that we did some fitting. This is very, very close. A Little bit tight at this end. Where do I take it off? It feels right on the top. So what I think I would do now is a shallow setting on my plane. A couple of shavings. If you do on the outreach here, support it with your hand. A Little bit of extra smoothing here. And look for bruising on the wood. You know, when you slid this in and out, a few times. Look for bruising on the sides of the drawer, especially along here to see if there is any tightness along this top rim as it's going in and out. This actually is running very smoothly. So I'm gonna push this all the way home this time. And I have a little bit of a lip on the bottom edge, but it's fairly flush on the top edge. So I'm going to take this out, put it in the vise. See, I've got the rim of the front and the side in the vise at the same time. I've cinched it fairly tightly. A few shavings here.
have a little bit here, I noticed, so I've taken a little bit more there, a little bit more there, and that's basically, I still got the letter A on there, or the number A, letter A, sorry. And a little bit of bruising from my hammer there. So we'll see how that fits now. But you've got an eighth of an inch to play with between the end of your dovetail, so you won't need that. I know your accuracy is gonna be superb. So there it is, I'm happy with that. Am I happy with that? Nope, still want more off that bottom edge. Didn't quite, quite take enough. should be it I think. If it is I'm going to put the screw in the spindle on the knob there and there it is. That's my drawer. I'm happy with that. It's a bench drawer. More than happy with it. Just drive this screw into here. That's it. That's removable, as I said before, very handy sometimes if you have something in the vise that you need to have uh, besides there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna break the corners here with two strokes or three, whichever you prefer. Just put a little bevel on there. Same on this, ever so slightly because they will ultimately break off if you don't do it. This is a working drawer. This is a drawer that you're going to be pulling out 50 or 100 times a day when you're working. So this, these two drawer sides, you could make them so that they butt up against the apron on the far side. I decided against that, not for any good reason. So what I'm going to do is take a marking gauge and set it to the thickness of the front, like this. There it is, and lock it off. I'm gonna run that along the inside here uh, from the front edge, because I'm going to put two stops behind here, which means the uh, front, draw front is going to be the stop that governs where it stops. So I'm gonna put these about two inches in from each side. So that's gonna be fixed there and there. So I have to drill these holes at an angle to get them in. And you can nail these if you want to. You can glue them and nail them on. I have to uh, drive a couple of screws here. And they tend to pull the, this back. When you drive the screws, countersink. We're gonna drive those screws into there. I'm not gonna glue them because ultimately things do wear out and in 20 or 50 or 100 years time, I will want to remove those, replace them. A couple of small screws. Right in here. And actually that didn't move too badly at all. I've just got one in at the moment. I'll put the other one in and then, but this will just show you how it works. There it is. So now I've got my natural drawer stop. I'm going to put one on each side so it doesn't rack the drawer when I slam the drawer shut. I'll do this one and then that's the finish of my drawer making treatise there. It's a great way to get into drawer making and it's a very practical addition 
to any work then. I don't know of anything I could do without more, uh, with less than the that draw. Really, there's no way I could live without the draw now. on that draw line there. Uh -huh. And you can still tap those because we didn't use any glue if you if you find that you're a little bit short or you can tap those either way with a hammer. Uh, in or out, if you need to. Okay, there it is, a perfect draw. I love it, I love the way it fits. I can't live without one. You won't be able to once you fit yours in your bench. It's a lifetime tool, it's part of the bench, you'll love it.